let me just say a few words about my colleague. Uh, Professor, well, his initials are R. B. Snoj. I just learned that these initials stand for Raghavan Bhunendra Snoj. He is a scientist of great repute. He did his MSc from uh, University of Kerala and went to Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, to do his PhD, which he finished in 2001. He did his postdoctoral work at Ohio State University in California. Uh, he was there, I think, for a few years. In 2003, he came to us. Relative to us oldies, he has been here only for a short while, but he already became an associate professor in 2007, and this year he has become a full professor. It is a remarkable achievement going by the tough evaluation processes that we have at IIT Bomb. Why I say this is to tell you that he is an exceptional researcher which is being recognized by the institute. What I would like to add is he is also an exceptional teacher. Like many of your institutes would be doing at IIT Bombay it is routine that at the end of every course that I offer, every subject that I teach, students give a feedback. And that feedback is made known to the teacher only after the teacher has announced the grades for the subject. That feedback usually tells us how effective our teaching was and what are the points that we would like to take care of for the next teaching and so on. Professor Sunoj is one person who has regularly, without exception, received exceptionally excellent feedback from his students. So he is also an excellent teacher. In fact, if you ask me, he is more of a passionate teacher and less of a passionate researcher, if I may say so. Of course, he is a great researcher, he is well known. So I am extremely happy and I am thankful to him for having agreed to come and share his thoughts to present to you something on presentation. So, Professor Sunoj, welcome and thank you for agreeing to do this. Over to you. At the very outset, uh, let me place on record my thanks to Professor Fatak first for initiating this wonderful activity nationwide and second for inviting me to talk to large number of virtual colleagues of mine in different remote centers of this great nation. And I also thank Professor Fatak for an exceptionally longer introduction and as with any other human being one would be very pleased to hear good, thing, good things being talked about you on a national platform. I am happy to hear that my teaching has been well received by the students of this institution and I will try to hope to live up to their expectations in the coming years as well. So today I am going to speak to you some very interesting points, very important details of how to make a scientific presentation. There are many secrets, you can read from the title, secrets of real life learning process. And I am a person who would like to share the experience which I have had in the past without anything hidden, very straightforward as to what was my experience and I will share some of those including some actions. So what I put together in this presentation is based on my own experience that is why I call it secrets of real life lear learning process. So let me begin uh, the presentation by starting with a disclaimer, it is a very uh, unusual disclaimer. So I will have several characters which appear in my slides and I will have several characters which you know goes into me and I will start acting like those characters during the presentation. So these characters are presented or enacted characters in this talk are so real that if you think that it coincides with your behavior you as a speaker let me tell you that it is with purpose. And I can only say sorry at the end of the talk if you wish me to do so otherwise you know take it lightly. Outline of this talk and you would see that in almost every presentation in the world 
including that of mine. So, there is an outline. This is a very important starting point for scientific presentation. And before I go into the contents of this presentation, as you can see, the, it, it's block, there are several blocks, four blocks of uh, presentation. Before I go into the details of that, I must first tell you why would you be a good, good speaker? And I am not referring to being able to speak well in terms of the language skills that I will come to that as I continue. But when I say being able to present well, that means that you have a story that you want to tell. You have a story that you, you have written, you have created, you are the contributor and you want to convey that to a large number of people. It could be a classroom, it could be a seminar hall, it could be a you know small little group meeting with many of your friends around or it could be a large huge international platform where about 600 people are listening to you from around the world. The starting point is being able to have a right attitude that giving a presentation is a skill that one should have whether you continue as a teacher, continue as a scientist and perhaps even continue as, as a salesperson or in a, in a corporate environment for example. You have developed something, you have a story and you want to convince your general managers, CEOs and so on and so forth. How will you do that? You have a nice great story, you know small little story which is very, very good. But unless you present that well, the story loses its charm. So, it is very important for people from different walks of life to be able to tell the story in a manner which is convincing, tell the story which, which would be received by those who listen to you. It is very, very important. So, it is not just about scientific presentation, not just about doing research and presenting your research papers. It is omnipresent, being able to present well is an, a skill set that is required in modern day life. Let me also add a few notes about globalization. All of you have heard this keyword globalization and most, most of us keep hearing that in the media, keep hearing that in newspaper. What is this globalization? Which simply implies that if a person is trained, trained in one of the institutions in this country, the person should be good anywhere in the world. That is the way I look at it. Because we, we work in, in the so called technically so called service sector, where we train people. As teachers, we train students. And these students are supposed to be taking the leadership role of tomorrow. And the students may be in this country, it, he may be or she may be in any other country in the world. But the student is supposed to lead lead a center, lead an initiative, lead a business, lead a uh, teaching institution and in different roles it would appear that the power of globalization is such that if you are trained today in this country, you should be as good as anywhere else and you should be in a position to tell your story any platform anywhere in the world. You cannot be just locally good, you have to be glo globally good. That is a huge challenge that is a good aspect of being global, that if you are trained, you are trained on global platform and any platform that you go up and speak and tell your story, you should be good. So, with that backdrop, I am telling you that this is a very important skill set that one should have that being able to present, being able to tell your story. So, my story is going to be in four different blocks, content creation, preparation and practice and I plan to talk about only first two aspects today and remaining two delivery on stage performance improvement a continuous process I will uh, postpone it for tomorrow's uh, lecture. So, it is actually it is a short lecture I want I am sort of stretching it out so that the contents are well received by the participants. So, let me start by content creation. The very key to content creation is first to have the right attitude. Okay. So, when you were in college or when you are in college, you are asked to give a presentation, the first reaction would be that oh sir, no, oh, oh. 
that that fear factor that that takes over that kicks in very very quickly and very fast there the attitude is incorrect so you need to be able to develop the right attitude and i have borrowed some quotes from nobel laureates and uh, you know famous people the secret of joy in work is contained in one word that is excellence so if you want to enjoy work you have to do it in a excellent fashion and now you have you worked hard you have good results you want to tell a group of people maybe your examiners they are going to evaluate you and i will talk about the secrets of how these evaluations happen at a later stage to know how to do something well is to enjoy it so today you are knowingly or unknowingly by listening to me you are taking a decision that okay i want to be a good presenter i would tell good stories i will sell my products so if you have taken that decision i think that is the right starting point before we get into the technical details of how to make a presentation so to know how to do something well is to enjoy it so how do we enjoy it you know those who have gone to the west and those people drink lot of coffee and that's not the coffee with milk uh, as we are used to in this country this coffee when you take it for first time it's so bitter and i i don't want to use this uh, or or promote alcoholism but those who have taken beer they would realize that a beer was not a great drink when you took it for the first time and of course i don't i don't consume beer so i'm not promoting in that sense but many of my friends told that th those who start taking beer they don't like it at the first place they take it for maybe for the company uh, maybe for the people around uh, but i don't think it's a great drink it it's bitter but as you take more and more as much as you take coffee more and more you begin to develop a flavor a, a taste for it okay so that is what i am referring to here to do something well is to enjoy it so you should have an attitude such that okay i like to present that's an attitude problem as supposed to no i don't like to present no i don't like to present should change to yes i want to present so in a large class the teacher would ask can somebody summarize uh, one of this technical aspect in tomorrow's class and most people what is attitude no 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 not me not me and they will turn around here turn around there so that teacher will not look at him instead you should have the attitude that okay if i take up i will read that well i would read much better than other people if i take up that assignment i will take it seriously that i will learn more things and i will also improve my presentation skill addressing the class so the attitude should be that can someone give a presentation tomorrow yes sir i will give that should be the attitude so if you are one of those persons who will say yes sir i will do and that is what i want to promote that scientific presentation given a chance you should come forward come forward and say that i will do it because you are going to gain through that you are not going to lose anything you are going to gain through that you will become a better person okay on the lighter side a teacher gives a note to i am not sure whether you can read the slide because of the poor uh, graphics there the teacher gives a fairly huge book for a small kid and says uh, just think of it as if you are reading a long text message okay kids don't want to you know take huge books and read the everything but the kids are so smart these days to read the sms read the text message the teacher is telling the kid that okay i'm telling you something which you would enjoy based on your attitude attitude of kids is what they are happy reading sms messages not really large long text books so think of the presentation as something that you like that's the whole point of giving this uh, small little cartoon just think of this book as if you are reading a long text message so let us go into the details of it after having assumed that you have started changing the attitude okay somebody is talking to me from iit bombay and he is telling that scientific presentation is great technical talks are great and you should have the ability because of all the different reasons like globalization being able to sell your products so on and so forth okay i think i am i'm willing to soften my attitude from a bit no no i don't want to present to okay let me try because somebody is speaking to me that okay it's good so let me try with that attitude let me move forward how do you create the content this can be in different different context that you are supposed to give a talk now i am assuming 
that you are a researcher somewhere or you are a teacher somewhere and I will have some slides directly pertaining to teachers. You are asked to give a presentation to a large class, you know I was fortunate to teach uh, you know class of the order of uh, close to 400 students, a class of the order of just 10 students, class of the order of 40 students, a wide spectrum of uh, number of students in the class. So, when you are asked to give a new topic or a new new uh, course for example, how do you create the content? It is a very important starting point. This is after having assumed that you enjoy doing presentation. So, your attitude is already said right that you are going to enjoy doing a presentation. So, let us worry about how to create the content. This is most important. First is to understand the topic well understand the topic very well. So, I will, I will come back to this point you know uh, sometimes I am, I am stressing certain words and I am missing certain words and re rereading the statement and stressing some other word. So, I said understand the topic well, then I said again understand the topic very well and very has a modulation I will come back to these points later. Okay. So, understand the topic very well that is important. And then you would say that okay, what do you mean by very well? I, I don't really understand the topic in the first place. Then how will I understand very well? So you need to spend a fair amount of time. For example, when I started teaching, just for one hour of lecture, minimum reading was somewhere between six to eight hours for just one hour of lecture. It was almost like eight to ten times more than the time that one is supposed to spend in the classroom that is when you teach a new topic for the first time. Okay. So, it takes enormous effort to be able to be confident on what you are going to speak. So, take that aspect very seriously that you will understand the try to understand the topic as best as you can. And if you are not able to make sure that in and around whatever resources are available compared to the times when I was growing up in my college there were no internet, no email, no Facebook, but it was only library and I, I was fortunate to have three libraries in and around my college. So, I used to be a regular visitor to the library and issued as many books as possible and read the selected topics from different books. The presentation would be different, but you get new knowledge every day that you read new books and tomorrow you are going to give a talk based on that same topic more you read you are going to be comfortable with that. So, understand the topic because that forms the basis of your confidence and many of you among the audience throughout this country many of you may be thinking about the fear factor okay, I am supposed to give a talk to 1000 people tomorrow how will I do that. Where is this lack of confidence coming from? Lack of confidence has its root in not being able to understand the topic well or you were not able to spend enough time trying to understand what topic you are going to speak on. So, once you understand the topic let it be just one slide, you are asked to speak about some topic just in one slide, you are not authorized to use any more slides just one slide and you can imagine how much content you can put in just one slide and if you are not sure about the content then it does not serve the purpose. So, you need to be able to know what is the content of that slide and each slide in a presentation. So, that forms the confidence. When you have confidence, all the nervousness, all the fear factor would slowly melt down. It is going to melt, it is natural that you are going to be more and more confident if you are confident about the topic that you have at hand or the slide that you have, have, have in your hand. So, be very sure about the content, poorer the content, lower the confidence and that any one of you will agree, any one of you will readily agree with me if you have put together some slides which you are not sure and you, you cannot go up the stage and said that oh my friend made it I did not have the time to look through that. You do not want to take such risk right, because I will I will talk, talk about the, the problems if you do not uh, uh, pay enough attention then uh, there are many problems which I will try to stress. Now, the initial part of creating a new presentation you should start thinking about what is to be included. Wonderful graphics, great videos, fancy colors, no these are not the considerations, the real content. Okay. 
if the real content is what you should worry about. What is to be included? Selection should be based on whether you can convince the audience on your story. Therefore, the first foremost thing is to decide what is to be included and there the consideration such as okay, this picture is so nice, let me include in my slide because people will say wow, great picture. A great presentation is not made by great graphics. So, keep in mind that the content, what you will include, what will be stressed? Not everything you can stress in a presentation because usually it is time constrained, 30 minutes talk, 15 minutes talk, hey, you have only 10 minutes and the student will have about 40 slides. How will you do that? So, not all slides can be stressed and not every region of a single slides can be stressed, but you should have a clarity in your mind that okay, this is a slide there the key point is this. So, you will stress that point. Okay, so, stress is important and there are few slides which are to be flashed. What do I mean by flashing? Just change the slide, make its presence just for a few seconds and the next slide will come. But what is the purpose of having certain slides with few seconds appearance on the screen is because that slide is okay, it is good, it, it is good to convey certain other points, but not very relevant to the presentation. I will tell you just a um, situation uh, example. Suppose I have done lot of work and my audience listening to me do not know the technical rigor of the work that is going to be presented. If that is the case, you will distract by giving too much technical details to the audience. Instead what you should say, that, but at the same time there will be one or two people in the audience who would understand the technical rigor. So, you have to tell them that okay, I have done lot of this, the key points come in the next slide. I have done lot of these things and that slide is to be flashed. Because if you go into the details of lot of these things, you know half the audience will begin to sleep and I will show how you can make the audience sleep. I will show how to do that. That is also part of this uh, scientific presentation. And now, know your audience. Never ever underestimate your audience. If I assume that oh, I am a professor at IIT Bombay, a great institution and somebody from the corner of a remote center will get up and ask, sir, you told this which is wrong. Oh, really? And there the, the attitude of you as a speaker cannot be that, oh, that little student asked me this question, he is wrong, I am right because I am a professor. You cannot have such attitude, which is incorrect, wrong. Teachers, speakers on stage are always there is a likelihood, there is a possibility that speakers and teachers on stage or everybody on stage can be intimidated. And fortunately, we do not have to fear about you know chapels uh, being thrown at us, that, that is a very, very rare possibility, but it is more humiliating than a chapel thrown at a minister or ministers, there are many events uh, these days and it is very frequent now. So, it is more humiliating for a teacher that you are not able to answer a question, which is a good question. Instead, you use your power to say that, no, that is incorrect question. You know that you are wrong. Please do not underestimate the audience. You never know what kind of questions can come from which corner of the, of the hall, which corner of the room. Be prepared and this should not affect your confidence. I will come to this point again. The confidence I said it depends on how well you understood the topic. And you cannot, you cannot make a presentation living in fear that oh somebody in that corner sir said that he will ask a question. He may be sleeping, you do not worry about it. So, you cannot, you cannot give a presentation fearing that somebody is going to ask a question. But what I am saying is that do not underestimate your audience. Audience are important, okay? very important and uh, you should respect the audience and take the questions based on their merit. So, a good assessment and this is something good assessment of uh, to whom you are talking to is a great, great bonus for those who go to give scientific talks in conferences. And usually what happens is that uh, you know you go, go to a in international conference and first row you will have like great names, Nobel laureates sitting and you know if Nobel laureates are sitting, it is their chair, let them sit there, it is my story, let me tell. If Nobel laureates are sitting, what is your problem? Does not matter who is a Nobel laureate, 
it is your time, you perform, it is your story, you tell, it does not matter who is watching you. Okay. So, now, but you cannot say that oh Nobel laureate, I do not care Nobel laureate, you cannot have that attitude, you need to have a balanced attitude. Okay. Nobel laureate or oh, if you spend 10 minutes uh, you know wishing them, what will happen? No point. So, you need to tell your story, right. So, never underestimate the audience and have a good assessment. What do I mean by good assessment? Good assessment implies that you have already seen many people who are experts in the domain. So, they may want to know some extra detail and give them some extra detail as and when you have certain slides which will talk about the rigor of your work and that is why the, the underestimation of audience. If you know the audience, you can present better. Okay. If you are in a classroom, you know the ability of students to whom you are talking to, you can perhaps teach better. And if you teach like really hi fi above the head, and students use this language, right? It went above the head, it was Greek and Latin. Do you want to give such a talk as a teacher in a classroom? No, you do not want to, right? You do not want to, because you want to spend your time effectively such that the students also get some benefit out of you talking to them. So, if you come up with like very complicated expressions and uh, you know put that on a slide and say that, oh, you note down, I will take rest for next 10 minutes, it would, would not serve the purpose. So, you should know the audience, if you know the audience, it is better and many instances you do not know uh, the audience and because you know I will go to a national conference and lot of people are sitting in the audience, I do not know not more than 5 people out of 400 people, what do I do? There I should assume that I am speaking to a general audience, so you should simplify things further, you should simplify, make little longer introduction, tell that this story is very important, this is a story people have not talked about before convince them that this story is very important. Once you convince them, an audience will naturally listen to you, they will follow what you are saying. So, have an assessment of the audience. Content creation continues, order of slides, that is flow, that is flow. When I say flow, you should become little bit imaginative. When I say the word flow, what do you mean? What, what comes to your mind? You just take take a few seconds and few seconds and think about what is a flow. What is a flow? Is it a flow as as slow as the coal tar can leaking? No, it's a dirty flow. No, I'm not interested. When I talk about a flow, to me, it's it's a flow of a small little, you know, uh, water flow, small little cascade birds chirping, imaginative, be imaginative. We have derived lots of inspiration from nature. When you talk about a flow and if you want to talk about flow of a river, where is it starting from? Think of those and if you, if you want to present the story of a river, how do you start? Should start from the mountains, correct? Should start from the mountains. You cannot say that oh, in the river there are 10 bridges, and that is starting from nowhere. So, when you want to speak a story about a river, you should start from the right place and you should end at the right place. Where do you end? Naturally, it will end on a sea, correct. So, this flow creation, because you are you are sitting down now to decide what is to be included, what is to be stressed, what is to be flashed and what flow to be put in place. So, I am talking about the flow. So, if you do you want to tell a story to the audience or you want ma want to make them tell a make a story on you? How do they make a story on you? If I have given today a very hopeless presentation, standing like a statue and murmuring a few words and presenting some very clumsy looking slides, then everybody in the nation would talk about, oh that guy from IIT Bombay, he talked about something which I never got anything and I was just sleeping, I enjoyed my sleep. That is a story on you. They have no idea about the story that you were trying to tell. So, keep in mind that if you do not give a good flow, then they are going to make a story on you and people would imitate my, my actions and that will be the you know center of attraction. Keep that in mind that order, the, the, the appearance of slides, in what order it will come, the flow is very important. The flow as much as this beautiful poem by Lord Tennyson. And I do not want to read it for you. you, you can please go through it, but I will try my level best to read. I come from the haunts of Coote and Hearn, 
I make a sudden sally and sparkle out among the fern to bicker down a valley. By thirty hills I hurry down or slip between the ridges, by twenty tops a little town, a half a hundred bridges. Till last by Philip's farm I flow to join the brimming river. For men may come and men may go, but I go on forever. Beautiful poem. You look at the flow. Look at the flow. I come from haunts of coot and hern. It starts from where it is coming from, in the mountains, where these plants are plenty. These, these birds are plenty. I make a sudden sally sparkle, down, sparkle out among the fern to bicker down a valley. So from the mountain it came to a valley. You imagine the, the beautiful flow of a, you know, a water, clear water river. Can you imagine that, how beautiful it is? So here you are talking about a flow. And in that flow, what are the key points? I come from, where I come from. So where your story is beginning. You have a research topic to present, but who started it? Where it, where it all started? Where is the original con concept derived from? That's a mountain, okay? And then bicker down a valley. Bicker down a valley. You, you have reached some kind of valley, so that's a major stage in in in, in a reverse uh, river river lifetime, right? Starting and valley. Valley is the valley is the place all the poets will watch the river, and all of us will watch the river. We can't be in the mountains uh, observing where the river had originated. So, bicker down a valley, 30 hills I hurry down. It's like fast. You look at the speed, 30 hills I hurry down. There's so many kilometers, all put in just one, one line, 30 hills I hurry down. So, poet is really accelerating his story over there. I will come back to how do, how do you accelerate your own topic. So, 30 hills I hurry down. Then. In between lines, I am not giving much importance. Half a hundred bridges. It talks about civilization. Half a hundred bridges, human creation, correct? And till now, there were no human creation before in the poem. Thirty hills I hurry down, all natural. Thirty hills, quick, fast, accelerated, story goes fast there. Half a hundred bridges. It talks about civilization, man-made. Bridges are man-made. So, when I say thirty, uh, when I say half a hundred bridges, it had gone through the gone through the towns and cities and major towns, correct? So the story has a flow. It all started up there, and when you know 30, uh, 30 hills hurry, hurried down, a lot of forest is already covered. Came to human inhabited places, cities. So you'd look at the flow, you would enjoy it. Now, till last, by Philip's farm, I flow to join the brimming river. You see the beautiful end, where it started, where it came from, where it came through, and then brimming river, huge brimming river. It emerged with the river. It once it merged with the river. You look at the joy of that little, uh, you know, smaller river, you know, merging with the brimming river. And the poet stops there. He stops there with a very powerful statement, very powerful uh, line. For men may come and men may go, but I go on forever. This is so inspirational. The river will go on forever. It does not matter how many hundred bridges it crossed. It does not matter uh, uh, whether it, it hurried down 30 hills or not, but this, this, this flow will go on. It is an inspirational poem in, in many sense. Okay, now, this is the story which I'm, I want to tell you, that your story should have an origin. Your story should have a sequence, script, and all of you watch movies, right? And all of you watch cricket as well. I, I presume that all of you watch cricket. And in a cricket match, Devi Shastri or Sunil Gavaskar will first come to the pitch before the match starts, extra innings or extra cover, whatever they call these days, and they come to the pitch first, before the match had started. They give a pitch report. Imagine, in a T20 match, the pitch report is given at the timeout phase. It will be completely out of flow, right? So there is a sequence of events. You are very much used to that. At that very much, whatever you are used to, you should put in your scientific presentation. You should put that in your, into your classrooms. That the flow is important. You can't give a pitch report and start at strategic timeout, correct? You can't do that. So the flow is important. 